I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and I pray that this time of worship will be a blessing to everyone welcome. And I know Brad Cole's gonna come up in a minute and welcome everybody on behalf of the board. But first, I just wanna say to people here today in the sanctuary, it's so wonderful to see you. Some of you I haven't seen since I was back for Christmas vacation, even though I've been back since March, so it's wonderful. And it's so wonderful that today is actually our first time that we're doing a Sunday worship online and in the sanctuary. And that's amazing. So let's just take a minute to just go, wow. Hallelujah. <laughs> we can't choke too loud, I know. Um, but I um, like, uh, for the people in, who are in the congregation, you have a bulletin. You have to read it really quick. Because when you leave, you have to you have to put it in the bin there, but the um, there is a online bulletin as well, and of course there are announcements um, on our website, and of course I want to make a special announcement that there's only three more days left of the auction, so thank you to everybody who took part, but please keep taking part uh, in that. And the other thing I wanted to mention was that this is actually um, Roger Richards' last official Sunday, I think, official Sunday, as caretaker. And we will do a bigger uh, thank you and so forth, but I just want to take the opportunity um, to say thank you um, on my behalf and the congregation uh, that you'll, you'll be missed, but I know you'll be here. And uh, you've always been so amazing. You're amazing to work with when I was youth coordinator and when I've worked here since. And I'm sure everybody has that feeling too. So uh, we will thank you again, but I, today on your last official Sunday, I wanted to say thank you. And now I'm gonna call uh, Andrea to come up. Yeah, so nice to listen to the organ game, and so nice to see everybody here this morning. Uh, we have 41 registered, and we have 41 here. So on behalf of the board, I'd like to thank you all for coming. Roger. Who was my favorite Who was my favorite Hi. Hi. Hello. <clears throat> Can you hear me now? Fair. <laughs> is this fun? <laughs> <laughs> in service uh, since uh, way back in March, so, uh, and I think this is probably the first time a lot of you have seen each other since that service, too. I mean, some of these are for us to get together and, and share some, uh, some follow-up news and some, some uh, fellowship and stuff, so it's so nice to be here again this morning and have it started. Hopefully uh, everything works out, which I think I'm pretty certain will. We'll be able to continue our in-person uh, services going forward. Um, yeah, so I had uh, the note here to uh, speak about our Roger what are you doing in the back there, and Heather, it was so nice to, uh, to uh, speak on behalf of our board, which is great, thank you very much for mentioning Roger, he's been here many, many years, Roger, and uh, we're certainly uh, uh, happy that you're uh, going to stay around the course and uh, and going to enjoy the rest of your uh, retirement uh, from here from Um we have a new minister, Reverend Kathy Wright. I just wanted to mention that. Uh, if anybody didn't know, I'm sure you all know now, but uh, we 
you wanted to mention that Kathy will be here with us at the end of November, I think, the last Sunday in November, will be her first, and hopefully we'll be able to continue our in-person services. Uh, we also have a new manager at the office, Elizabeth Joy. Uh, she's been welcome now for a few months, so if you ever get a chance to drop by and say hello, and welcome Elizabeth to our, to our church here, to our congregation. Uh, I just want to mention the board uh, worked very hard this summer, uh, given the issues around the pandemic and the things that we had to do and the finances of the church, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the board, uh, who was supposed to uh, have new members back in February at our AGM, which we didn't have, the board then decided to stay together for another year and help, help us through this uh, time of, uh, of uh, uh, pandemic, pandemic times and, and the tough times that we had here in our church this summer. So everything is great now. We have uh, the board still together. We're going to remain together until our AGM, which will, I think, will maybe in, in January. Um, uh, hopefully, if we have a pandemic, maybe we'll select a new board. We have, we have all the new members this year, so that's good. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, thank you very much to the board, to all the board members. Some are here this morning for staying together and through this uh, time of uh, difficulties. Um, so, yeah, that's about it. Uh, one thing I'll, I'll close with is the auction. Uh, we have our auctions online now, and uh, it's, there's a uh, Close to 200 items on, on the line to bid on. So, if you haven't had the opportunity to get online, uh, go to our uh, webpage, our Top Gun Manager webpage, and you will uh, find a link there. You register and start bidding. So, the auction closes on Wednesday night at 10 p.m. And there's a lots of uh, lots of things here to bid on. Lots of things that haven't been bid on yet. So, have a look and, and uh, get bidding. Anyway, great to see you all. Have a great day. Uh, God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. And now we're going to begin our worship like we do every Sunday by lighting the Christ candle. And of course, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever walks with me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And so we light this candle to remind us that Christ is with us in this and every moment. And now I'm going to um, invite all those who are able to stand, to stand as we uh, read our, our creed. <clears throat> we are not alone. We live in a lost world. We believe in God who has created and is created, who has come to Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. And you may be seated and we'll, we'll pray together. So that gracious and loving God, we come before you with praise and thanksgiving. You have drawn us together as a community and bid us to follow in faith as your people. Bless this time of worship, that we may truly magnify your name. Prepare us to bear further witness to the hope we know through Christ Jesus. Amen. Good morning. It is so awesome to see all your faces. Excellent. And for those of you who are at home still, uh, it's equally amazing to be able to share time with you here in the church and also share time with those who are still watching at home. And we are trying to monitor both at the same time and actually our online following is about as large as it is normally. So it's kind of neat that we've got quite, quite, a, uh, quite a large following here with us. We can feel those people with us here today as well. Um, and 
uh, just a special word from, from Beth and I to say that it's been lovely working with Heather and lovely working with Brett during this time, during this online time. I know it's been a bit weird for everybody. Uh, it's been a bit weird for us. Um, and, uh, but at the same time, it's kind of given us opportunity to choose hymns. Uh, you know, we're almost kind of purposefully choosing hymns so you won't sing. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm talking to you, Wanda. <laughs> But, uh, but uh, feel, uh, feel good about the fact that we, we, we were talking about it and we think that we might have you guys sing the last hymn in the future. So we'll choose a hymn that you guys can sing, put the words in the bulletin, and then as soon as we sing, zip, we're out the door. Uh, so, uh, so we look forward to that as well. Um, this is a hymn um, that is called Shout for Joy, Shout for God, I'm sorry. Um, and um, you might not know it, and that's perfectly fine. However, we're we're all we're all a little stiff. We're not quite sure what we're supposed to be doing. But as far as I know, we're allowed to clap our hands. As far as I know, you can leave that with me on me for now. Okay? So you are allowed to clap your hands. So um, would you just play the first verse of this? And we're, I'd like you to get our your hands going for this. Okay? So here we go. So here's here's how the music sounds and how our clapping is going to sound. but at least we can move our body a little bit. So feel free to clap along. And let's gems. I wonder why they're there. There's a note. The note says, the blessings of in-person, in-sanctuary worship are like treasure gems. Anybody agree? Oh, there's another bag. To this bag. More gems for a different color with blue. Ooh. I wonder why they are here. Ah, another note. The blessings of online worship are like treasure gems. I agree with that too. And today, we get to mix 
our blessings of online worship and blessings of in sanctuary worship together. And for that, we can truly give God thanks. And now I'm going to ask you. Good morning. It's so good to be here. <laughs> uh, our first scripture reading is from Isaiah chapter 25, reading verses 1 to 9. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things. Plans formed of old, faithful and sure, for you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from, the earth, from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The second reading is from Philippians in chapter 4. And here the Apostle Paul is writing from prison to his friends in Philippi. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge you, Odia, and I urge Sintish to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. May God add his blessing to these readings. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, open our hearts and minds that we may hear the message that you would have for us today. Amen. A few years ago, here on the Avalon Peninsula, 
We had a summer when we experienced particularly awful weather. The weather was something like it was first thing this morning. Perhaps some of you remember it. I'm talking about the summer we had, when throughout June and then again all throughout July, it was cold, it was foggy, it was wet day after day after day. That summer, during those weeks of seemingly unending fog, I with others began to give up the notion that we would ever experience summer heat at all that year. Hopes of spending evenings and weekends on the beach and hopes of enjoying the sunshine in our backyards seemed out of reach. I can clearly remember too, though, the day that summer in which the sun finally peeped through the clouds. I remember that in my office building, where I worked at the time, that myself and co-workers were suddenly drawn to our windows. There were literally gasps of, what is that? Our joy erupted into laughter and happy dances. Yes, happy dances. The sun was shining at last. We truly rejoiced. During the days that followed, the fog lifted, the clouds parted, and the sun rays intensified. The sun once again lit up our office rooms with the same warm glow we had experienced in summers past. The summer weather remained throughout August, and I believe into September that year. We shook off the gloom which had followed us through the previous months and embraced the sunshine. We began to live beyond the walls of our homes and workplaces as we returned to our cherished and familiar summer activity. Today's Old Testament reading reminded me of that day that the sun broke through the clouds that summer. One can almost visualize the writer of today's Isaiah passage doing a happy dance. This morning's Old Testament reading contains a song of praise. Verse 1 of chapter 25 begins like this, O Lord, you are my God, I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things. Your counsels of old our faithfulness and truth. This verse provides us with wonderful words to express our praise to God, but there is something more for us to see too. This outburst of praise proclaims a turn in perspective. The first verse in chapter 25, filled with praise, reveals a marked contrast from most of the previous chapter. The 24th chapter of Isaiah is full of doom and gloom, of caution. It is filled to the brim with testimony of destruction and devastation. About halfway through chapter 24, a couple of verses turn to words of praise, but the praise is silenced with such phrases as, woe is me. And the chapter resumes its focus of seeming hopelessness. The beginning of chapter 25 then is like a burst of sunshine after the fog and rain. Within today's reading, the author proclaims trust that God will provide deliverance, that God will provide hope. Today's passage celebrates that God's glory will shine through. Gladness will replace sadness. Lament will turn to rejoicing. The writer of Isaiah 25 underlines that the gloom overshadowing the people will be shaken off. In verse 8 we read, And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all the people, the sheet that is spread over all the nations. It is thought that the devastation alluded to in the 
this section of Isaiah is most likely linked to the destruction of Jerusalem in 587 BC and the destruction of Babylon, which followed. Today, we have before us a hymn of praise that pushes through the gloom of destruction of yesterday and seeks to move the community forward to, in a, a new tomorrow. Christopher Sykes, in his interpretation's commentary, underlines the fact that the prophet proclaims God's bigger picture for all people. Sykes discusses the significance of this hymn of praise using these words, quote, what was required of the prophet and the righteous community was patience and steady vision. The steady vision now proclaimed that plans of old were being fulfilled in the wonderful things witnessed in the present day. End of quote. The prophet Isaiah called on the people to witness God's faithfulness. What about us in our time? Do we have patience and steady vision? Have we faced the past seven months with patience and a steady vision in contending with the enormous changes in our day-to-day -day living, in our life and work as a community of faith brought on by the current pandemic? I know we have lamented, but I have also witnessed great patience within this community of faith. What about a steady vision? What is the vision that we have had that has brought us to this day? What is the vision that moves us forward? Today, we celebrate our first Sunday at Topsail United during COVID, in which we are offering a public worship service in the sanctuary. We celebrate the ability to be present in the sanctuary that carries special memories, that has been dedicated to, to worship of God. Where we can see each other when we look around. As we celebrate these things, it is natural too that we look towards a time like before COVID, when there will be no need to register for church, no need to be confined to a particular seating, when we can sing out and not wear masks. These are wonderful things to look forward to, but here's a question. Do we really want to go back 100% to the way things were in February? Or is there a bigger picture? Is there a steady vision that will move us forward to something beyond what we knew before the pandemic. Over the summer, I heard from quite a few people who said that due to illness of either of themselves or loved ones, they had been able, unable to go to church services for many years. These individuals were so thankful for online worship as they could now again worship with this community of faith. I've been made aware too that not only are members of Topsail United who are living in the area joining online worship, but I have come to hear about people living across Newfoundland and Labrador and across Canada. Individuals in Grand Falls, Windsor, in Western Newfoundland, in Ontario, in Winnipeg, I know of people who are United Church and those who aren't, who join us online. We have often spoken of being part of a larger family of God, all connected. Through online worship, we have the opportunity to grow in understanding of what that means. So today, we celebrate also the way in which God has led us during this time of COVID to do something new. 
Today we can celebrate the way in which God is calling us into closer community, calling us to recognize a wider community. There is no doubt that the past several months have been challenging, upsetting, devastating in many ways, and we do need to acknowledge that. But even so, in these times, there is light in the darkness. This pandemic and other circumstances in life can lead us to feel as if we are looking into a cold, drizzly, foggy day and thinking that the weather will never change. Even in times like these, God is with us. My prayer is that daily we would be drawn towards the light of Christ that forever and always shines through the darkness. It can seem a challenging prospect to rejoice when we are in the midst of devastation. Our Philippians reading encourages us, though, to always continue in prayer. Our Philippians passage also provides these words to help us form a prayerful perspective, despite the challenges that surround us. In verse 8 of chapter 4, we read, Whatever things are true, whatever things are honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things. Today, let us go forth carrying with us the words of praise proclaimed in Isaiah and the words of direction provided in Philippians. As we meet with struggles, even as we lament, may our praise and faith in God be heard also. Let's do this too. Each time we face difficulty, let's seek out the opportunity to draw closer to one another and to God. Amen. So as I mentioned, we're going to encourage people to sing a hymn at some point. Uh, we haven't necessarily set it up today, but another government regulation is you can hum along. So if you feel the need to, for the music to move through you, you can do it with your lips tightly closed together, but it's still something, you know? Yeah. All right, here we go. Thank you. 
church sanctuary and from the sanctuaries of our homes. We thank you for all the ways in which you have supplied our needs and the needs of others. We thank you for your guidance, for providing gifts of creativity, gifts of music, community, abilities and use of technology. Lord, we thank you most of all for your compassion and care for us and all creation. O oh God, we acknowledge and confess that at times we do not look to you in faith. At times we focus only on our own needs. Forgive us, we pray. Thank you for the assurance of your forgiveness. Empower us to go forward, to seek you, and to look outwards. We pray that we would stand steady in vision and that we would continue to grow in patience, trust, and faithfulness. Loving God, we bring before you the needs of all those we know and those we don't, all those who suffer pain of any kind, all who are sick, all who mourn this day, all who are lonely or afraid. May your presence be known in a special way today. We ask these and all our prayers in the name of Jesus who taught us when to pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. With joy we bring our offering for the work of Christ's church. And of course, because of COVID, our offering has, has been brought forward already. But we will now join in a, our offertory hymn. Once again, an opportunity to clap your hands. I'm the little dog and you
before the benediction, I'd like to thank everyone again who joined us online and everyone who joined us in sanctuary. Um, it's been wonderful. And for those of you who are in the sanctuary, I, I feel like I'm on an airplane now, but um, when you leave, so li leave on the, wi the window on and go down, uh, and you'll have to place your bulletins uh, in, in the bin. And um, of course, yeah, keep space and, and no lingering. Um, and I hope in, in months to come, we can, we can have coffees. Um, but let's just say hallelujah again for having this, this day today. May the peace of God go with you. And as we go, let's continue to give God thanks and give God glory and to hold on to all that is good. And may all we've done be done in the name of God, our Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.